morning. Morning, morning. morning. Um, yeah, the Harvest Quest is a, a consortium of uh, bacteria, uh, mainly. They're enzyme producing bacteria which help to degrade um, biosolids and the lignin and cellulose of the yard waste um, and the wood products. So um, basically, what we have is a, a unique uh, composting system. Typically, a compost pile, when you build it, it generates a lot of heat. So it uses of oxygen inside the pile. So you have to keep turning the pile frequently to, to introduce oxygen to keep it aerobic. Um, that's good, but of course, if you turn in the pile constantly, you generate a lot of odor from it, especially in the beginning stages. So the difference with this microbe that we add, um, they're so reactive to oxygen that when we inoculate the pile, as Daryl says, we place it on the ends of the pile, it's also on the surface before we put our capping layer over the top to insulate the pile. Now it'll move just beneath that capping layer along the surface of the pile first. So our initial high temperatures are on the outside of the pile instead of on the outside in. So it's a reverse of normal composting physics. Normally you go outside and stick a probe in and the further you go the hotter it is. This is the opposite. You come out here the next day and stick a probe in two or three inches and that's where your high temperature is. And that high temperature will take care of the human pathogens yeah, we're on the here. outside that yes. wouldn't be that would be normally incorporated in yes. the middle. Okay. Yeah, because then we've got our capping layer on the outside, which is about six nine inches thick, which insulates the pile to ensure that we get temperatures all the way to the extreme edge. So What's the capping layer made of? It's made of uh, already composted material that's re reused. We don't screen it to keep the chunky pieces in it because we want airflow through the capping layer too. Um, and basically that movement of bacteria from outside in. Um, heat rises at the top of the pile, as you can see right behind me, which draws cold air in the side. So we've got an enhanced chimney effect going on. So as the air is rising out the top, bringing off the excess moisture, it's, it's sucking cold air through the side, which is of course airing the pile and keeping the temperature right where we want it, which uh, we have to be above uh, 131 Fahrenheit, as Daryl says, which is 55 Celsius. Uh, typically these piles are in the 150s, 160s, so 70 Celsius in most cases. So, uh, weed seeds, pathogens, everything is killed off pretty quickly. The piles get turned how often? Or? Uh, they actually turn twice. They get mixed initially, which is you know, it's just a production to homogenize the material. Sure. But, uh, after several weeks they get, they get turned, basically they're physically picked up and moved from here to curing. And then they'll get turned again and they go through the screener. Um, and then the cure pile. Uh, so the materials move several times. Each time we move it, disturb it, then there's a spike in temperature. So we go through a high temperature phase uh, at least three to four times during the process. So. Yeah, typically, uh, you know, as I say, you, you know, you normally turn a windrow frequently. Um, EPA and, and state regulation for windrow composting is five turns in 15 days. Um, again, that causes a lot of problems with odors because you turn in a pile that's extremely active, it will push off a lot of odor, particularly from biosolids or something like food waste. Um, so this method that we use is actually approved by the EPA and by the state as an alternative method modification to meet the same time and temperature requirements. So it's, um, the other benefit too to this kind of system is when you build a windrow, you will get formation of bacterial colonies. You know, even in a conventional windrow, you'll have, have microbes that are slightly different to what we use. But when you turn in a windrow all the time, you, you disturb those colonies. So those populations never really get a chance to, to build. Um, but in this situation, because we leave that pile for an initial 30-day period, those populations become very, very prolific. If you dig in these piles, there, you'll see a lot of colony formations. And I'll show you some slides later. But um, So that kind of translates through also to the end product. Uh, we had some product recently tested and compared it to the old method of doing it and uh, the beneficial microbe levels, um, actinomycetes and stuff that helped to control nematodes were about 70 times higher. Um, so, you know, you get a better punch there with uh, with disease suppression as well as um, nutrient value also. If we turn a pile all the time, we drive off ammonia, um, so we lose nitrogen. If we're not turning it, the ammonia has the chance to become converted through microbiology to a, to a total nitrogen, which is an organic N, which is a slow release form. So, so it has its it has its benefits. Can you address the maximum height and width of the rows and, and why that is? Um, well, we're limited here, obviously, to the to the dimensions of our turning machine. Um, 
there is a plan to get a bigger turner going forward, um, but we don't normally go much higher than about eight, nine feet height-wise and width-wise, 20 feet at the base. So uh, anything bigger than that, then it's, it's, it's a long way from the outside to the middle at that point. So um, even with our method and the, and the chunky yard waste that we use, it's very difficult to maintain their own conditions if you get any bigger. Are there any issues related to environmental temperatures and keeping your pile and optimal temperatures for breakdowns? No, it doesn't. It's not really affected, particularly with that capping layer on there. Um, we have some operations in Canada and we have, um, I think our coldest location is probably Summit County in Colorado at 9,500 feet. So it gets 30, 35 below out there in the winter time and these piles will, you never see an ounce of snow on them, they just keep steaming away. It doesn't affect them at all. The process work with other types of mixes like, like horse manure yes, and wood yeah, chips? Yes, exactly. Yep. Yeah, we use it for uh, anything from um, that type of material, manures, um, to manure, horse manure, cow manure, dairy, feedlots, um, food waste. Consumer and post consumer. Uh, we do a lot of bioremediation projects with the microbes too to clean up contaminated soils. Um, so that's another benefit of the microbes. They will break down you know, herbicide, pesticide residues, that kind of thing. Hydrocarbons, they're all broken down pretty quickly. Dichlorium? Uh, take care of that too? <laughs> uh, some of them are, there's, there's, some, there's a couple that are, we're doing some testing actually right now because of the difference in our method. Um, to measure that breakdown. Um, obviously we started with pyrolid years ago, uh, these broadleaf herbicides. Um, so, so yeah, we are studying that right now. You can do that, I'm sold. No, I <laughs> I'll buy all you got right now. <laughs> <Very Animal. good. laughs> yeah.